Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. I want to share some encouragement and a little bit of vision with you. We're in the middle of a long, difficult project. I also happen to be finally unpacking from one of my previous moves. I got to one of those boxes, you know, the ones you can never quite get rid of, but you don't know why you have them. And well, I ended up finding the perfect excuse to respond to a great comment. Somebody asked me a fair question. Ryan, how did you get to where you are? Tell me more about your story. I get this question in a few different forms periodically, and I need to start off by saying that I've met many people that are smarter than me. I've met many people that are more driven than me. I've met many people who are more disciplined than me, and I have definitely met people that are taller than me. It's fair to say that I've met people who are better or more skilled than me in every way possible. I've also met a lot of people who are afraid. And as a person who's felt that fear, a fear of failure, of not doing enough, a fear of being alone, a fear of everyone deciding that I'm an idiot and walking away from this channel, I've felt those fears. And I want to share a part of my nature, a part of who I've always been, not because of any obvious external pressure or uh, external influence on my life, but there's always been something, some might say wrong. I prefer to say different about me <laughs> for one reason or another i can't stop building i can't stop being creative i can't seem to turn it off from a young age my parents quickly learned that i would just start like bouncing off the walls like physically shaking if i just couldn't find a creative outlet i've always needed some time to just let my brain work to process whatever it is it wants to think about. And that's led me to spending a great deal of time designing, building, just trying to make stuff that I was wholly unqualified to make for the sake of building and, well, really no other reason. I've had people ask me, especially in college, why do you do this to yourself when I would spend many nights on random projects rather than going out partying? I believe my response was something akin to, I'm all about that productive work can't say that foregoing social activity for the sake of working on projects can't say that was really a good idea but it's definitely something that i did i have wasted so much time trying to build stuff in stupid ways that make pretty much no sense at all and i'm going to tell you the story of three little projects that i did a long time ago that are a part of my story and help to show how i got to where i am I'm pretty sure that I put these projects in chronological order, but I'm bad at time, and I can't really remember how long ago this was. It was quite a long time ago, around late middle school, early mid-high school, probably high school, something like 16 years old, something like that. The first of these sketches that I would like to talk about is centered around the concept of multiplexing. This is a principle where you try to drive many LEDs with fewer I.O. pins than would typically be required. This relies on the fact that LEDs only conduct current in one direction, so when unpowered, they just don't light up. The sketch starts simple with a nebulous block that I presume to be an Arduino Uno, and what looks like a transistor or something, yeah, I've, yeah, I had no idea how to draw circuits at the time. It's probably a transistor, BJT if I had to guess and it seems like I'm trying to create some form of rows and columns. Naturally, if you look in the upper left and upper right hand corners of this drawing, you'll see that I'm drafting up some terrible video game dungeon crawler sort of thing. I'm pretty sure it was text-based, and I'm pretty sure I made it, which is, again, a complete waste. <clears throat> Perfect use of my time. It's only natural for circuit diagrams to coexist on the same page with video game schematics. Yeah. Now, if I were to make a diagram like this and bring it into work, I'd probably get some combination of fired and laughed out of the room. But that doesn't matter. I wasn't doing this for work. I wasn't doing this to do something for someone else. I wasn't doing this to draw a good schematic. I was doing this to learn and to build. And if we flip over the page, it's obvious that I learned something through making this sketch. Even though I can't really discern what in the world I was trying to do, flipping the page over makes it obviously that I learned something, even if I can't understand it a few years later. Now, instead of seeing the nebulous blocks and haphazard wires, probably 
through some mentorship from my father, who happens to be an electrical engineer as well, I seem to have figured out the right schematic symbol for a transistor. So that's helpful. I also seem to have drawn my rows and columns as rows and columns, which is very helpful in interpreting this diagram. The bigger picture is starting to unfold. One can clearly see that I've drawn out this matrix of what's probably LEDs, and this is mapped out with positive and negative sides shown. Based on what I'm trying to do here, it looks like half of my transistors are upside down, or backwards. I don't think this would really work. But that's my favorite thing about electrical engineering. You don't need a professor to tell you if you got the answer right, if your circuit will work or not. Physics will teach you everything you need to know. It doesn't matter what you think is an appropriate or correct schematic. What matters is if it works. If the schematic works when implemented in a physical system, congratulations, you got the answer right. And that's how I learned. You can see that I've done some simple math here as well, playing with different arrangements of 4x8, 8x8, and 4x4 matrices. I'm comparing the efficiency of building a matrix of matrices rather than one big matrix, so I learned something about multiplexing. It's evident on this piece of paper that from one side to the other, I learned something. Okay. Some time passed, call it a few fortnights, I learned some stuff. Apparently, I learned that Graph paper is a lot better for sketching out ideas, even though I'm still not old enough to draw a straight line. Okay, well, I don't think I'm old enough to draw a straight line anyways. <laughs> Maybe someday. Let's start on the crazy page. Uh, this is showing some audio channels coming into analog pins, some LEDs being controlled by transistors, and this is definitely an Arduino Uno. I can't help but notice my lack of current limiting resistors on those LEDs. Cringe, but I'll learn eventually by LEDs burning out and figuring out why later. I seem to have some form of transformer equations, calculations. Apparently I'm driving 9.45 volts from 120. Good thing I'm working with mains voltage. Seems like a good idea for a high schooler that has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> with appropriate parental supervision, of course. One thing to note here, it seems like the concept of a bridge rectifier is intuitive to me at this point because I didn't even bother to document that in any form, though I know I did it. At this point, I just assumed that the rectification would happen. Now, I think this gets a hearty, uh, don't try this at home, out of 10. When we flip this page over, my design intent is made more clear. I wanted to make some kind of a system that would interpret sound and make lights flash DJ style. I definitely did make this, and I think the project had three or four iterations before I'd finally had enough. The final version of this design had three or four microcontrollers stitched together via digital bus communicating uh, one monitor, these are inputs, I think one ran the outputs, maybe two ran the outputs, I, I don't think I had enough IO pins or something. It's a cool thing, I made so many solder fumes while assembling this that I set off a smoke detector while making it. I'm sure everything that in was good for me. Good, bad, or carcinogenic, I learned something. And this is a halfway decent panel drawing, if I do say so myself. This is the first drawing that is actually clear enough that I can understand what in the world I was trying to do, what, 10, 15 years, how old am I? <laughs> Whatever, years later. <laughs> oh. I was trying to use transistors with different base resistors to drive different LED segments and make a simple analog VU meter which is still trash by drafting standards, but for someone with no formal education, electronics, or drafting, not bad. But there's another project here that I've stumbled upon my drawings for, and I want to talk about it. I've been fascinated by LEDs for a long time, if you're noticing the common thread in these projects, and persistence of vision, uh, this is a persistence of vision light sphere, it's kind of more evidence of that. The two drawings are iterations, me trying to figure out how to have a motor suspended that's being spun by a motor such that some LEDs uh, can be kind of spun in two directions and ultimately look like a sphere. And this one never got built, but I do remember prototyping the rotating brushed contacts. I remember cutting circles out of plastic lids, gluing aluminum foil to them, cutting out circles and uh, in the, at aluminum foil and trying to spin this and have a constant contact, ultimately just prototyping, trying to see if I could produce a circular contact that could make this concept work. I guess the answer was no, because I never built it. But I was considering things like the weight of the frame that would need to be spun and ultimately decided that a wire truss that could be soldered together might be a good way to assemble that inner spinning frame. 
The plan was to build a physical electromechanical assembly using both structural and electrical elements of soldering to make something that I thought might be cool. Stumbling upon these drawings, well, made me smile. It made me remember some old projects that I did, these projects that taught me many, many things before it was really my time to learn them. These projects taught me the purpose of mathematics, some practical applications of what I was learning in school. These projects inspired me to get a degree in electrical engineering. These projects are ultimately a part, a little fingerprint of how I got to where I am. These projects are a reflection of an attitude, how I've never let feeling unqualified or inexperienced in something get in the way of trying. Because the reality is, everyone is inexperienced until you do it for the first time. So if you want to be experienced, just get started. Just go for it. You're going to fail. It's going to be a struggle, but you're going to be better when this project is done. It doesn't even matter if you succeed or fail. What matters is that you tried and that you're learning. You're engaged in this process. It may not be obvious from the drawings that we looked at today, but the principles of multiplexing and persistence of vision are actually fairly complex and nuanced. And the fact that I walked into my college education with an understanding of these principles gave me a huge leg up in my education. I distinctly remember one of my first labs when we were using a principle of multiplexing to drive multiple seven segment displays on an Arduino Uno. I called my professor over to show her what I had done, and when she saw that I had illuminated all four digits simultaneously using only like seven pins, she actually pulled me aside. And she basically asked me two questions. Do you feel like you're learning anything in this class? And do you think that we should allow students to test out of this course in the future? It was an introductory class, an introduction to embedded systems, a class that assumes that every participant had never programmed a microcontroller in their life. And it's a very important class. If you're interested in electrical engineering and you've never touched one of these microcontroller devices before, this would be an essential part of your education. And the reality is, a lot of this information is available for free on the internet, and many people decide to self-teach in these areas or participate in a high school course or club. Like A lot of people gather this information without formal education, so they don't really need this class, but a lot of people never do that, and they really need this class. And my hope is that if you're watching this video and you're considering pursuing a degree in electrical engineering, that I can arm you with the right information today that will get you pulled aside by your professor too. I want you to enter the workforce with basic awareness of EMC and compliance, the kind of stuff that college just doesn't teach correctly most of the time. I hope that I can inspire you to do projects the same way that I did projects, because trying, failing, and continuing to try is exactly how I got to where I am today. Coming up next on EE for Everyone, more motor series. As always, I'd like to give a special thank you to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step you've taken to support us directly. Thank you. I'd also like to thank you all for your support through viewership, comments, sharing what we do with others, those who choose to watch ads, and those who are subscribed. It has been awesome and humbling to watch this EE for Everyone community grow, and that just can't happen without you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone. Thank you for staying till the end. Bye.